With the past few weeks being an absolute disaster class for most FPL managers, I thought I'd put together the ultimate wildcard draft for game week 8. Starting off this video, I wanted just to point out that I don't think this week is the optimal week to be playing the wild card. I think 9 or 10 are still the better week, so if you can manage, I think that is the better option with the international break coming up. And, you know, some of the players that are included in this video do feel a little bit knee jerky at the moment but we are going to get into this if you are looking to play that wild card i'm in a position where i might have to play it due to injuries due to suspensions so if you are in that same boat then this video is massively going to help you right so let's start off with our goalkeeper we have gone for the combination of turner and Ariola, the two cheap goalkeeper options obviously west ham's fixtures post game week 10 are absolutely amazing nottingham forest for the next two as well are really good so you can manage with turner till then and then switch to Ariola, who has been fantastic over the opening couple game weeks one of the highest scoring goalkeepers in the game right now currently at 4.2 million as well Turner still at four so absolute bargain central in terms of the goalkeeper department like we said the fixtures are really good for game week 10 for West Ham and the next two for Nottingham Forest are really good for Turner. So you've got yourself a nice goalkeeper rotation right there. Moving into the back line, we have gone for Dan Byrne. No Kieran Trippier in this draft as I've used the money elsewhere in the attacking kind of lineup. So we've gone with Dan Byrne. We're sticking with the Newcastle kind of defenders because, you know, they've showed really good resilience over the past few game weeks, getting clean sheets. Obviously, Dan Byrne has picked up one attack in return as well. I wouldn't be expecting that from him every single week. As you can see, the fixtures, West Ham, Crystal Palace, Wolves, Bournemouth, all within the next five game weeks. So some very good fixtures that we want to kind of get our hands, hands on Sorry, with these Newcastle defenders. I think Dan Byrne, I'm putting this out there right now, I think he could be susceptible to a little bit of rotation. Obviously, they've got Lewis Hall, they've got Timo Liveramento as well. So we might see a little bit of rotation within that side. But with Dan Byrne being quite a versatile defender, potentially playing centre-back with the Botman injury, that could be something that we could see in the next few weeks. I think he might might keep his place within the side. Been very consistent as well in the Premier League. I just think with Champions League football coming up, you know, there might be a little bit more rotation in that Newcastle side than we like to think about. But Dan Byrne, a very cheap and easy way into that Newcastle defence that has been quite good over the opening, not opening, past couple game weeks. We'll get there eventually. Moving on to our next defender, and it is a doji. I think over the past two, he's actually put in some really impressive performances. Yes, the points haven't been there, but we always were kind of expecting that. Over the opening, like, couple game weeks he was fantastic as well picking up attacking returns as well as clean sheets Spurs currently one of only two sides unbeaten in the Premier League and this run that they're about to go on is absolutely fantastic something that you definitely need to be looking to take advantage of with no European football as well for Spurs you imagine it's going to be the same side pretty much every single week it allows the players full time to recover rest recuperate so you do think, you know, the Premier League games are going to be their top priority and that is where they're going to put out their strongest squads, which we can't quite say with other teams, you know, that we are targeting with this list. A lot of European football coming up, a lot of cup competitions, international breaks as well coming up as well, which could play a big factor in injury. But, you know, the Spurs fixtures, Luton, Fulham, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, Wolves, Aston Villa as a next kind of six to seven fixtures is absolutely amazing. Spurs as well proving that they are a top, top side that we definitely need to be investing in this season and like I said with the lack of other competitions going around Spurs I definitely think they're a side that we need to be investing quite heavily into moving on to our final defender we have gone for the free at back in this uh, draft and it is Matty Cash been very very impressive picked up an assist against Brighton and the positions that this man is getting into the Unai Emery system is massively benefiting him from an FPL perspective so attacking so dangerous I covered him in my video yesterday for the transfer target he is like 0.3 expected kind of goal involvement behind Kieran Trippier and for you know a lot less money and with better fixtures coming up as well obviously like I said there is European football coming up for these kind of clubs like Aston Villa Newcastle you know, so we might see a little bit of chop and change, but I don't think Kieran, uh, Kieran Trippier Cash is going to be one of those victims to that because he is so instrumental in the way that Villa play. The, you know, they utilise their fullbacks. Him and Digne have been absolutely quality over the opening couple. I do want to caveat this though by saying I think Luca Digne could see a little bit of rotation with Moreno coming back to full fitness. I think Moreno will play in the Conference League on Thursday, and we might see a little bit more rotation on that left hand side. So if you are looking for a cheaper option into that Villa defence, I 
I don't think Luca Digne is quite it, especially with Moreno being back. But Matty Cash, he would be my top priority if I was going to go for a Villa defender. Moving into the midfield, we do keep with the Villa theme, and it is DRB. The fixtures, like we said, Wolves, West Ham, Luton, Nottingham Forest, Fulham, Tottenham and Bournemouth. That is a great stretch of fixtures for a team that are absolutely flying. Decimated Brighton, one of the top sides over the past few years in the Premier League. You know, just made them look like relegation fodder, to be honest, yesterday. So I definitely want as many Villa players in there. Obviously, Diaby at the moment does have a flag. Came off in around the 60th to 70th minute with a little bit of an injury, but, you know, he walked off. He looked fine. Obviously, just wait till the press conferences for this one. Maybe just make sure that he is 100% fit. But I think over the kind of before this game week, he was looking a lot better of an FPL option than Ollie Watkins. It's only the fact that Watkins got five returns in that Brighton game that I feel he's come onto people's minds. Prior to this, I was always targeting Diaby with this game week. I think he's looked much the better option. You know, so much more attacking, so much more dangerous in front of goal. But, you know, Watkins has now got those five returns and the whole game has completely flipped. But I still think I would be trying to get Diaby in there as well because he is a great cheap midfield option. You can always switch him out to one of the Brighton boys when their fixtures turn around game week 11. Maybe you look to one of the West Ham players like Bowen, James Ward-Prowse as well when their fixtures turn in game week 10. That could be something that you do if Diaby isn't quite cooking or isn't, you know, available for this game week 8. Moving on to our next midfielder. I briefly mentioned him there. It is James Ward-Prowse. He's been excellent over the opening kind of few weeks for West Ham. You know, moved to a new club and has settled in you know look really really good on set pieces something that you know West Ham always look to exploit you know he's He's just, he's just brilliant, isn't he? It's like West Ham are back to where they were two, three years ago when, you know, you had to have a West Ham asset in your team. You know, I'm thinking when we had Kufal, when we had, obviously, people like Suchek, Antonio, Bowen. It does seem like we're getting back to that kind of West Ham kind of spirit. And I have gone for James Ward-Prowse. Can't quite afford Bowen with the other players that we've got. But I definitely think if you wanted to swap out one of the, you know, further midfielders that we have later in the video, that potentially could be an option because Jared Bowen has been immense and he's always one of my favourite FPL assets to own in the game. But we've gone with James Ward-Prowse. He's got that set piece threat, playing a lot more far forward than he ever did for Southampton as well in this David Moyes system. So definitely a good option with their fixtures, like I said, with Ariola early in the video, turning around game week. 10. Moving on to our next two midfielders, we're going to do these two together. It is James Madison and it is Son from Spurs. Both looking absolutely electric over the opening couple seven game weeks. And you know what? The fixtures, we said it with a doji, that Luton one looking delicious as always. After that, Fulham as well. You know, they have the highest XG conceded in the league. You know, these are two great fixtures for Son and Madison to be massively exploiting. Obviously, Son came off in around the 69th minute and Ange Postacoglu made some comments about potentially, you know, protecting him from further injury. But like I said with Adoji, they don't have any other competitions to be focusing on. And with Son playing in that forward position, I do think he is verging on kind of the comments of essential. You know, I'm not quite saying it, but he's starting to put in performances and starting to pick up hauls with him playing in the number nine, getting that extra points for midfield, uh, for midfield goals and for clean sheet points as well. He is verging himself on the comments of being essential in everybody's team with these good fixtures as well. Just like I said, make sure that he is 100% fit. Obviously, the comments from Ange yesterday were, you know, they're kind of rotating and trying to look after him the best that they possibly can, but he could see a little bit more rotation, maybe coming off in the 69th, 70th minute. So maybe next week he isn't potentially worth the armband. Obviously, Haaland, you know, has a difficult fixture in that game week. So maybe it is one for that. Maybe it's a conversation for that uh, a little bit later on in the video. But yeah, definitely one that I think could be a captain next week. But with them potentially trying to manage his minute, minutes around injury, you know, it might lead to some potential other issues. Um, you know, lack of points coming off a little bit earlier. It's not great. It's not great. But I do think he is one of the players that you're going to need if you are going to wildcard in game week eight moving on to our final midfielder and this is a man that i feel a lot of people are trying to get into their teams with this wild card and it is mohammed salah having quite a lot of difficulties as well trying to fit him in just mainly down to his price because he is so expensive as we all know up to 12.69 million 
in the game. Obviously, the fixtures for Liverpool do turn in game week nine. Everton, Nottingham Forest, Luton and Brentford as a run is ridiculously good. Obviously, Salah, this is the first time he's blanked this season. Has been a very consistent performer, very similar to Harry Kane last year. Not putting up mega scores, but just constantly picking up points within that Liverpool side. Obviously, there was, you know, that Spurs game kind of went a little bit array with kind of refereeing decisions and stuff like that. Would have picked up an assist for the Luis Diaz goal if that was, you know, given correctly as well. So would have continued that streak of consistent point scoring as well. So definitely something to be looking out for. How can you get Mohamed Salah in this team? Because again, I don't think he's verging quite on the word essential, but with these good fixtures coming up, with obviously Liverpool being so heavily reliant on him and his points and him being such a consistent scorer over the opening couple game weeks, I definitely think he is a player that you need to have if you are going to be looking to wildcard, building that team around him and trying to find cheap, available assets that can help you build a quality side. Right, moving on to our next player and moving into the front line, we do have Erling Haaland. Now, there is a discussion to be had with Manchester City's fixtures kind of taking a turn, a disappointing performance against Wolves, Champions League, Carabao Cup, all these other competitions as well starting to kick into gear. You know, heavy rotation could set into play. Haaland not looking quite the same player he has, missing quite a lot of big opportunities. Is it worth having him? I still think so, yes. I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. I still think he is, you know, a player that we need to be having just down to the fact that he is so heavily owned. You know, I think if you go without him, you are massively risking it because he's one of those players that could just spark into life in one of these, you know, difficult fixtures, get a hat trick and your rank is done. You are done for the season because of how highly owned this man is. Captaincy though, that is where, you know, questions do start to be asked whether or not he is still good value for that armband. Obviously, we've spoke about the Spurs fixtures, you know, Luton, Fulham, really good fixtures to be targeting. If that was Haaland, he'd have the armband. So maybe Son, you know, in that striker position, maybe if you've got James Madison, those could be options. Obviously, Liverpool as well, we've got Everton, Nottingham Forest and Luton coming up with Salah, you know, only having the one blank so far this season. It does pose that question, is he potentially worth a gamble as well with the armband over the next few weeks definitely so in my opinion so i think have harland but i think you need to be looking at potential captaincy rotation coming up for the next few weeks with other players having really really good fixtures so i still think go harland but captaincy wise i think you are going to be looking at other players like son and salah that is why they need to be you know in this team and kind of virgin on the word essential we don't want to put it out there yet but that's where i'm going with this Right, finishing up our game week eight wildcard draft, and it is Ollie Watkins off the back of that impressive performance against Brighton, where he picked up five attacking returns. I'm just going to point this out off 0.9 expected goal involvement, which is absolutely ridiculous. That is a huge, massive overachievement for him. I mean, Aston Villa in the game as well, massively overachieved with their expected goals. If you watch the highlights back, it was quite a lot of like, you know, outside the box goals, a little bit of luck with the final one. The the steel Douglas Louise one so I definitely wouldn't be expecting that every single week from Ollie Watkins I think he has been a very consistent scorer over the, you know the opening seven game weeks but you know before this game week there was no kind of conversation around Watkins and he wasn't even in my kind of frame of thought he was kind of a little bit of an afterthought I was kind of moving to a situation where I was thinking do I have when I wildcard in 9 or 10 do I just have Haaland and have kind of two maybe dud players like Dominic Solanke and a 4.5 million you know that was kind of the thought process that I was going through maybe trying to target Diaby over Watkins just because I think he had that little bit more explosivity about his game and his point scoring potential but now Watkins has done this he throws himself into that question what do we do with him how do we get him in this team you know he doesn't have penalties as well which is a really valuable thing to kind of you know mark out and it's very rare we see players that you know do so well do so well the following week if you get what i mean it's very rare that we do see that where players you know massively overachieve on their underlying data and then manage to do it again but this form that him and villa are in i think he is you know got to be in this side with those fixtures as well coming up you can see him getting at least four to five attacking returns within probably the next six seven fixtures so definitely a player you know his right his rank rise is going to be in there as well his eo is going to be massively you know 
against you if you don't go for him so i think he is one that you're just gonna have to have and maybe after you know that uh, those good fixtures we do look at alternative players but like i said he is a very good option villa as well cooking at the moment right before we finished let's have a quick run through of the bench like we said we've got Ariola. we spoke about him and the rotations game week 10 will be the week that he'll come into the side with west ham's really good fixtures then we've got anderson one of the highest scoring defenders in fpl at the moment he has scored two Two goals crystal palace as well have been one of the best teams for xg conceded i wouldn't be expecting attacking returns from him every single week he is a center back who scored some absolute worldies the one yesterday against united was ridiculous do not be expecting attacking returns but palace's fixtures if we have a look on my laptop nottingham forest newcastle tottenham not great and then burnley everton luton west ham to it massively massively shifts they're not an attacking team at the moment crystal palace not really creating too much in terms of attacking opportunities i've had Eze in previous weeks and i got rid of him this week for son just because i feel like they are missing michael elise at the moment i feel when he comes back it does pose the question how do we get a palace attacker into that lineup but at the moment i think just go for the defenders they put in a really good underlying defensive data and they rotate extremely nicely well with the other defenders we've got kabore here again any 4 million or 3.9 if you want to go for charlie taylor defenders are great options on this uh, wildcard draft and then umbama 4.3 million he's in here just to help us get that extra funds to build the rest of this side. If you do have any questions about your wildcard for Game Week 8 or when you should be wildcarding, do hit me up in the comments below as I do try to answer every single question. Make sure to like and subscribe as well. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.